Oh, you again. So I was driving home from the doctor in January when I noticed my electric car needed a charge. So I pulled over to charge it while I got lunch. No big deal, right? Well, only to come out and find, to my f***ing surprise, the car hasn't charged at all, and it's now f***ing dead! Lousy electric car! So as I hiked the rest of the way home in sub-zero temperatures, I realized that I'm slowly dying of hypothermia. Well, f***! I lived a shit life, and the only joy remaining is knowing my wife will have to deal with the stupid electric car I left in front of the strip club. S -s Suck it! But as the lights begin to go out, I can't help it but once again think about Star Wars. I'm fucking dying, and this is what comes to mind? Shit, I'm going to hell. Well, then I guess let's get on with it. If you saw my last two videos, I postulated why the next Star Wars movie would benefit from the death of either Finn or Poe. So, let's continue with the train of thought and take a hard look at the last remaining major character in the sequel trilogy, Rey. I'd rather not. Lover or hater, she was the star of the show. We followed her character arc the closest, and she's the heir apparent to Luke Skywalker. So much so that she changed her name from Palpatine to Skywalker at the end of the last movie. Although I postulate that the real reason she changed her name was because every god <coughs> mother in the galaxy would be looking to get revenge on the one f***ing dude that ruined countless millions, if not billions of lives during his tyrannical reign. I'm gonna pop a cap in his ass. Would you blame her for changing her name? It's like if I left Germany and moved to Poland in 1946 and introduced myself as, hey, I'm Steve Hitler. Oh, don't mind the name. That was my grandfather. I'm good, and you can trust me. Nine, 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 nine. Okay, okay, this went dark fast. Let's get back to the reason for the video. I think we all know, but if not, Disney has announced that the next Star Wars movie will feature Rey yet again as the main character of the movie. The weird thing is that they're almost acting like she wasn't the star of the previous three movies. Are you seriously trying to make the point that either Poe or Finn had more screen time than Rey? Get the f*** out of here with that nonsense! Female Luke Skywalker was 100% the star of the last three movies. It felt like you barely saw Finn in the last movie, and Poe was missing for about an hour in The Farce Awakens. Maybe what they mean is that, this time, the movie only has Rey and no other actors whatsoever. Perhaps Rey will get marooned on a planet and only have her lightsaber to talk to. It'll be like that 2000 flick Castaway with Tom Hanks. She can name her lightsaber Meg because the farce is female, and then anytime she gets mad at it, it's just shut up, Meg. But whatever. Disney has also selected Charmin Obeyed Chinoy to direct the next Star Wars movie. Good luck fing saying that three times in a row. Also, great, someone that doesn't know jack or sh about Star Wars. Jack left town. Ignoring her man hating comments, Obeyed Chinoy was very thrilled about the project and said that it's about time we had a woman come forward to shape a story in a galaxy far, far away. Folks, Ray was the god star of three movies. How the f*** can we make it more female? Well, I don't think we've had a Jedi go through menopause yet. Maybe that could be it. Okay, Rey gets hot flashes and then grows a beard. Uh, me. Movie done. This is why the next movie needs to have something happen to Rey. I will kill her. She's been the focus too long, and in my worthless opinion, she's oversaturated in the franchise. Rey became a Mary Sue. There was nothing she couldn't do, and she ended up with quite a plethora of force powers. What is a plethora? Why don't we go through the powers, shall we? And unfortunately, I'm using Screen Rant to provide a list. Power number one, force vision. Fair enough, most Jedis have that. I see everything. Power number two, mind probe. Which I guess is different than the anal probe. Power number three, mind trick. And you'll drop your weapon? And I'll drop my weapon. Sorry, she confused me with a Jedi mind trick. Power number four, telekinesis. Yeah, okay, <laughs> doesn't that like come standard with the force? How the, f <laughs> the hell are you gonna pick up your lightsaber? I don't think they're grapplers in Star Wars. Power number five, force jump. Okay, here's where we're at the end of Luke Skywalker's powers. But wait, Rey has more. Power number six, force Skype. In the original prequel movies, both Jedi and Sith could sense when someone strong with the Force was near, but f***ing hell, the last Jedi showed that they could make long-distance phone calls. See, now that's some bullshit. Alright, let's keep going. Power number seven, Force Lightning. Grampy had it, so of course she does. You can get that from me, got it from his mother. And finally, power number eight, Force Healing. Christ, she heals faster than the f***ing T-1000 could heal itself in Terminator 2. And apparently this Force Healing ability also applies to objects as well, which is how she fixed Luke Skywalker's lightsaber? She can fix anything. My point here is that Rey is way too overpowered, and what better way to draw in a new audience for a new Star Wars movie than to having all the powerful Super Mega Force Rey get offed at the beginning. This would give you the ability to introduce a new potential character and allow you to fix your mistakes from the previous movie. Movies. Let's be honest here, Rey was kind of boring, which is fine, but she was also British mid. It's like if you had Captain America played by a middle-aged dude with a dad bod. Well, that's hot. Oh, and there's another reason why you need to get rid of Rey. It's because she's already dead! Why don't my friend sister's one out? She's just dead.
Yes! I am saying that Daisy Ridley did indeed <laughs> the bed. Sounds far-fetched? Well, hear me out, kind internet people. After the rise of Skywalker, what in the f*** <laughs> happened to Daisy Ridley? It's not like the rise of Skywalker wasn't a huge success. The movie grossed over a billion dollars, unlike some other recent Disney releases. Daisy was the darling of Disney. So what the hell happened to her? It's like she dropped off the face of the earth. Well, to answer this question, let's first take a look at her credits on IMDb, specifically right after the release of The Rise of Skywalker. The next three out of the four credits were voice only work, with the exception being Chaos Walking. And f I don't even know where to start with this stupid fucking movie. Chaos Walking has so much crappy CGI in it that Daisy really doesn't even look like herself at first glance, but it is her. So I'm thinking to myself, well, there goes your theory. However, fear not, as Chaos Walking was actually filmed back in 2017. The problem with this flick is that it tested so poor that it was pushed back from its original 2019 release and ultimately dumped in early 2021. This movie only grossed 27.1 million against a 100 to 120 million dollar budget. So the only work that she did was voiceover work. I'm starting to think she might be dead. I'm glad she's dead. I mean, with Chaos Chaos Walking having been filmed before The Rise of Skywalker, and her only other credits are voice work, what the hell happened to Daisy Ridley? I mean, did she get hit by a car? Did she die in a plane crash? Hopefully she wasn't a big fan of Boeing. Did she get the virus? Did she suit up and fight in the Ukraine war? She fell off a cliff and died on impact. What the f*** happened to Daisy Ridley? Ugh. Folks, I really think Daisy Ridley is unfortunately gone and has been for some time. I surmise she met her maker between 2020 and 2022. And I also suspect that Disney may have covered it up. Allegedly, of course. Actually, wait a hot <laughs> minute. Oh my God, I, I just realized something. Wasn't this the time frame during Bob Chapik's reign as CEO? Chapik ran Disney from 2020 and was outed in late 2022. And this is the same time I suspect that Ridley disappeared. That seems like quite a coincidence. Holy sh**, this overlay can't be a coincidence, can it? Did I just solve Daisley's death? Is it possible that someone at Disney, perhaps Bob himself, was involved and the company decided to cover it up? Again, allegedly, of course. Don't want to get sued here. It's just my opinion. But if you think about it, it all makes sense. Daisley dies under Chapik's watch. Call it a terrible boating accident on It's a Small World or something. You're a Bob. What do you do? Only a few people witnessed the incident, and you know you can buy them off, but she was the lead in your Star Wars franchise, despite blowback from stupid YouTube Star Wars fans. Also, your company is starting to feel the pain from the Varus. But you know what's becoming the rage of the internet recently? Deep fakes. They are all around. Some good, some bad. But there's new thing even behind deep fakes that's taken the world by storm. Artificial intelligence. Then it dawns on you. Ridley can live on his AI. AI means artificial intelligence. But there's a problem. The AI generated content you've seen still looks rather stale and not very believable. But honestly, who are you kidding? Have you not seen the Star Wars movies? You could replace Ridley with a plaque of wood and no one would notice. Either way, if you're Bob, you devise a plan for your maniacal cover up. You realize it has to be gradual. Disney seems to be having problems lately with controversy, so we have to break this down into steps to avoid attracting any negative attention. Here they are. Step one, you know you have some time with the pandemic and you still have some content with Ridley in it, even though it's on the shelf. Release it now to avert observation. See, she's still here. She's still acting. Step two, you work on the voice side first. AI voices are the easiest to replicate. So you write out the content, upload it to an AI voice generator, and boom, you've bought yourself more time for the full release. Step number three, AI beta test. You've got Ridley as an AI. So you begin to introduce her to the public, but do it in a fashion that no one would look too deep. And that's what they f***ing did in a movie called The Bubble. Rest in peace, Daisy Ridley, because your new AI persona, Raybot, will take it from here. The Bubble is a forgettable flick where it follows a cast and crew attempting to shoot a sequel while in quarantine. Raybot only has a small part in the movie. And guess what? She's a f***ing artificial intelligence in the movie! That's right, you've got Raybot here, and she is horny. Uh... Okay. But seriously, if you want to try to replace a deceased individual with an artificially generated human, would it not make perfect sense to beta test this in a movie where they are in artificial intelligence? Makes sense to me. Of course you detractors will say that I am a delusional dumb <coughs> duck. Well, you can lick my fine feathery <coughs> call. Moving on. Step number four. If you are successful with step number three, then you have to take it to the final step and do a full length feature with the new AI as the star and we'll see if it will pass. Eh, close enough. So what movie does this cabal of shady executives put together to try this? Well, how about a Raybot movie called, get this, Sometimes I Think About 
dying. That's right, Raybot is in a movie where she likes to think about how she would fucking die. You can't make this shit up. What better way to provide cover for an AI movie than to have one that thinks about dying? It gives a perfect distraction if you're caught. You just backtrack and say it was a tribute to the late Daisy Ridley because maybe she actually ended herself IRL. And that's it. Daisy Ridley is no longer among the living. I'm sorry you had to pass, and you have my condolences. But if we're gonna be real, your acting was stiff, robotic, and rather unemotional. You really suck! And it plays right into the sinister evil Disney executives to use you as a full ex machina approach for your artificial replacement. Raybot doesn't need to eat or sleep, and Raybot won't get herself into trouble, unlike other living celebrities, like our darling Rachel Zegler. So in closing, I'd like to say, dear Raybot, I truly hope your AI handlers treat your virtual spirit well, and hopefully if your body Body is ever discovered, we can close the book on your story. But I am sorry to say that with money still needed to be made, the abuses Raybot will suffer are sadly inexcusable, unacceptable, and just unfortunate. The only bright side is that the acting will improve. Hey, thank you for watching. We hope you understand this is just satire, and we have a good time doing it. If what you saw here made you happy, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you didn't like what you saw here, please hit the like and subscribe button, because it'd make me happy. Thanks for watching. Now please, just leave me alone.